Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, who has a significant role in the history of this show, which I'll tell you about, because without her, we might not have had close to 1,000 episodes now. I just want to mention I have a new book. It's the 10th anniversary edition of Unprocessed. What's different from the original edition is we added 30 new recipes. We updated all the recipes where we could to include options for lower fat if you're somebody that can't have nuts or seeds. We also included color photos by the enormously talented Hannah Kaminsky, and we have a brand new incredible form by Dr. Forum, Forward. It would be great if we had a forum with him, but Forward by Dr. John McDougall. If you purchased the book already, or if you will consider purchasing it by midnight on Sunday, April 3rd, Pacific time in the year 2022, we'd love to send you a thank you gift of almost $100 worth of bonuses. You simply send either your, your receipt or a screenshot of your receipt to the email chefajbonus at yahoo.com. And within 20 minutes, you'll receive three exclusive videos that I made, two hours each of cooking classes that I actually sell for $25 each with a PDF of the recipes and the audio version of this book, which soon will be on Audible. So thanks for your support. Well, those of you that watch the show regularly know the show wasn't a show when it started. It was just me attempting to go live with my community to create a sense of community at the start of the pandemic on March 20th, 2022, pushed the wrong button. It went everywhere on YouTube and Facebook and about 600 people were watching and they appreciated the support during the early stages of the pandemic, but it was kind of boring, just me talking. So I called a few of my friends that are doctors and chefs and said, Hey, you want to go live with me? Well, this young lady not only did it once, but she did it twice while she was actually working at the true North health center. She was interning there. And so really I kind of credit her with, with, really starting the show because she really kind of created the the feeling of the show which is really more conversational welcoming not really you know I mean yes it's didactic and we teach you things but it's really just sort of like you know me chatting with friends and so I welcome her back as often as she wants to come back but since she started doing that she is actually working with plant-based telehealth now which means you could get a private consultation with her in the comfort and privacy of your own home please welcome back Dr. Nikki Davis. Thank you, AJ. It's so good to be back. And you know, what's interesting about your story is I think it's because of you that I ended up with plant-based telehealth as well. Because after we had that first video chat that you're talking about while I was at True North, I watched your show. I think it was the next day after I was on, or maybe a couple days later, you were on with Dr. Lori Marbus, who is the co-founder of plant-based telehealth. And she was talking about this new platform that she had created to make it to where people could have access to a plant-based doctor anywhere in the world. So that's how I found out about it was through your show. And I immediately messaged her and said, how do I sign up? And so now here I am on plant-based telehealth and here we are still having our fun conversations together. That is so great. And I, that's what I love about my show, because I kind of think of myself as like the Don King of veganism, like really trying to promote everyone and everything that's plant based. And so I love that I'm able to connect people much more so now that I have a show than when I was hitting the road every week speaking to one or 200 people at conferences. And the thing that's really fun having you on the show, Dr. Davis, you're not only a wealth of information, as you proved during your wonderful uh, PowerPoint that you gave at the Truth About Weight Loss Summit. And I think you have a, an event tonight, if I'm not mistaken, that maybe people can sign up for, but you actually know how to cook. And you're the one that told me about sumac, which is like now my pretty much my favorite spice. Oh my gosh. I love that. Well, and I saw that one of the ranch, you know, we're going to be making some ranch dressing today, but I saw that one of your swaps with the salt was the sumac. So that's fabulous. I'm glad that you're enjoying that. It's so good. But some people told me that they, you see, I, I got mine at local spicery, but some people ordered it off Amazon and they said it had salt in it. So that kind of defeats the purpose of having a Ooh, salt. I should look at yeah, I should look at mine. I don't think mine does. I got mine from the, I think it's called Savory Spice in Santa Rosa. I got mine while I was there. I'm pretty um, sure it probably does. Yeah, it's just sumac. So luckily, but yeah, great. Well, it's so good to be here. Um, we're going to be doing, I think we're calling it the whole food plant-based oil-free ranch dressing showdown <laughs> or throwdown, whatever you want to call it. Oh man, ranch dressing has always been my favorite. Just, it's so delicious. Yes. And I 
honestly, I have not had ranch dressing since going whole food plant-based and it's been something that I've been wanting to try. And I've actually talked to some patients about it, even like, Hey, go, you know, find some good recipes that are low in fat, that, you know, so the, because really at the end of the day, if you have a good dressing, you're going to eat more greens, which is really what the key is, right? Try to get in as many of those great healthy greens that you can get. So I had been looking at finding some ranch dressing recipes and there are several, there are some that are made with nuts. There are some that are made with beans, some that are made with tofu. So I thought, well, I need to try all these. And I knew I was going to be on your show. So I thought, why not just try them on the show and we'll see how it goes. So I haven't made any of these recipes. So it'll be a little bit of an adventure. Well, that's great because you have an unbiased opinion. The reason I like Drina Burton so much, which then became Nan Simmonson's version, which then became my version, was because the 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 bulk of it, the thickness and the creaminess came from potato instead of nuts or beans. Well, and that's yeah. So that would be the other one. Now I don't have all the ingredients to make Nan Simmonson's version of it um, because it requires uh, one thing that I don't have, which is dill seed. So not dill weed, but dill seed. And so I have that on the way to my house. So it'll be here in a few days. And I'm going to, I'm planning on making a video, making that one as well. And then we'll see how it compares. And if you want, you can do it on your own or you can do it on my channel. And if you do it on your own, if you give me the file, I'll put it up on my channel, like as an update. Yeah. Well, it would be great to be able to do it on yours. I think that'd be fantastic because- that is, so, even though we're, we're full till July, ranch yes. dressing is so important. We're going to yes. bump. No, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I might even have some left over from today because really, you know, I'm going to be making it today. But the best thing is if you can store it in the fridge, get it nice and cold, it thickens up. And so then hopefully I'll have some left over and I can really compare all of them at that time. But today, well, at least I think I'm going to try to make four three or four recipes today. So we'll see how that goes. I've got a big pile of all of these things that we're going to put together. So, um, and I think that I have the link for most of the recipes on there. Uh, the, the ones that I'm going to be making are, so the minimalist baker. So she's got one that uses cashews. I'm also going to be making one from the vegan eight and hers is, um, it's either cashews or sunflower seeds. And then we've got plentiful kiki and hers also asks for nuts, but an option is beans. So I'm gonna do the bean version of that one, white bean version. And then I'm gonna also, so I was talking with uh, Tammy Kramer last night. I was on her YouTube show last night and uh, I had mentioned to her that I was going to be making some ranch dressing recipes. And one of them is hers as well. And she uses silken tofu in hers. So that'll be fun. So the first one I'm going to start with is the minimalist baker. Now this one, like I said, it is cashews. You have to soak the cashews overnight. So luckily I remembered to do that last night, but I have um, one cup of raw cashews that have been soaked overnight that I'm going to put into my blender. And AJ, it's so funny. I have a, a Blendtec blender. Uh, you know, I, I don't really have a preference between Blendtec and, and Vitamix, um, but Blendtec is, is local to Utah. So I decided to, to have a Blendtec blender, but it's been having some issues. And so I had to send it back. So luckily I had a, a good friend, Harriet, who lent me her Vitamix. And so this will be the first time using this Vitamix. So I hope that I am able to make it work okay. Um, so I put in the one cup of the raw cashews. And then the next thing it asks for is um, unsweetened almond milk and lemon juice. And you actually end up mixing those together so that it kind of curdles up. So I put those together already and they're already kind of starting to thicken up a little bit. So I'm gonna pour that in there as well. And the nice thing about a lot of these recipes is really you're just throwing everything in the blender and it does all the work. You don't have to do a lot more work than that. Um, the other thing is uh, a clove of garlic. So I'm going to throw that in there. And then um, she has on hers. So the Millis Baker, she has in here um, a half a teaspoon of sea salt. Um, you know, I, I don't use a lot of salt in my recipes and I don't really find that it really needs it much. Um, so what I'll do is I will use probably half the amount. This is the only recipe I believe that does have some salt in it. And so if you're someone who does not like to use any salt at all, you definitely could use an option like the sumac, ground sumac. The other one that I'm gonna be using today that's an alternative to salt is um, 
well your world stardust um because that's one that tammy kramer uses in hers yeah that's a good one or um nan used benson's for me in mine oh yeah yeah all right so just put a little bit in there and then um, a pinch of black pepper. I know you you don't do well with pepper, do you? Oh my God, I'm allergic to it. That's why it's so hard for me to eat you know, restaurant food and other people's food because they forget that it was in the mustard, it was in the broth, and then I get uh, Yeah, yeah. All right, so I just put a little bit of black pepper in there. And then uh, she also has on here onion powder. And I would say that it looks like through most of these recipes, uh, common is onion powder and garlic powder. So we're going to do a fourth of a teaspoon. And I know, AJ, you like to double recipes, so you've got lots of leftovers. Since I'm making so many of these versions, I'm just doing just, just the you know, single version of it because I don't need, I don't think I need that much ranch, ranch dressing in my fridge. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing a fourth a teaspoon of onion powder. Would it be fun to have your family weigh in too and just like put ABC or one, two, three on them and see what they Yes. Choose? Yes. In fact, um, it's spring break this week. So my son's home today. So I might see if I can get him to come in here and, and try out once we're done. All right. And then we've got um, apple cider vinegar. That's another one that's pretty common. So vinegar in the ranch dressing. Um, I know that uh, the Nan version uses red wine vinegar. I think it's Plentiful Kiki who does the white vinegar. And then most of the other ones are apple cider vinegar. So we're gonna do apple cider vinegar. It looks like it's a teaspoon and a quarter. So we'll throw that in there. All right, there's one. Yeah, I'm excited to try these once they've kind of thickened up in the fridge and yeah, they do, get they, nice they and do cold. Chilling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and then the other thing that this one requires, so again, this is the minimalist baker, is maple syrup. And I know some of your followers probably don't use any sort of, um, you know, sugar substitute besides maybe using dates. Um, but this one is about a half to one teaspoon of maple syrup. So it's really not very much. Um, and it's really, it says to, to taste. So we're just gonna try about a half of a teaspoon and see how that goes. But just give it a little bit of sweetness. It's kind of fun to see all the different variations of the ranch dressing to see what you can what you can use to make ranch dressing. I think traditional okay. ranch dressing was buttermilk. I think that's what is what it had. Yes. Yep. Exactly. And that's where for this one, doing the lemon with the almond milk kind of curdles it up to make that kind of buttermilk. Okay. Okay, so we've got all of the ingredients in here except for the fresh herbs. So this one is nice too, this recipe, because it, it calls for some fresh herbs. So we'll add those in once we've mixed this up. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how this works. There we go. Ooh. muting it. Don't forget to come back at five for day seven, the last day of my free Dinner with Chef AJ series. We're making spicy broccoli peanut noodles and more. And thank you, Nan, for this beautiful shirt. Okay, so it's coming along, it's smoothing out. You now, because those cashews are in there, it takes a little bit of time for it to really smoothen um, or get smooth. Um, but the nice thing is when you're soaking them overnight, that really softens them up, so it makes it a lot easier. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, so it definitely needs a little bit more time, but what I'm gonna do, um, is I might just let that run for a minute and then we can start on the next one, start getting the things together. Yeah. 
There we go. Now it's really clicking. So, and you can hear me okay, AJ? Okay. A little bit. You know, it sounds like you're underwater though when the, when the, when the blend. When it's running. Okay. So we're going to also add to this dill, parsley, and chives, and they're all fresh. So once it's nice and smooth, then we'll add those in and then we'll see how it looks. And I know you like Trader Joe's as well. I found some of this, you know, fresh dill and all the fresh herbs. They just smell lovely. Okay, that's looking great. I will show you that. Okay, so nice and smooth and white, it's looking great. So now what I'm gonna do is transfer this into a bowl and then we'll add in those fresh herbs. It already smells really good. And of course, once we add in those chives and dill, the dill of course is the best part. Then it's gonna even smell better. Okay, so we've got basically a tablespoon of minced dill. So I'm just gonna take some of this beautiful fresh dill. Just chop it up. Yeah, I've noticed that some of these recipes use, um, you know, fresh, uh, fresh dill, and then others just use the uh, the dried. And it's, but it is interesting to see all the different variations. You know, we've got celery seed and um, some other fun variations. Celery seed should give it a little saltiness too. Yeah, I think so. Chop this up. I think we're going to be using this fresh dill for some of the other ones, so we'll just make plenty of it. And, um, can you tell what states? Because we had a few medical questions sent in. If you have time for them, we know. Yeah, definitely. Cooking demo, but what states are? I know that plant-based telehealth is covered in every state in every country, but what yes. state are you personally covered in? Okay, so um, I am in Arizona, Alabama. California, Colorado, uh, Florida, Louisiana, Montana, Utah, Washington, and um, looking at adding in uh, Oregon. So right now I've, I've submitted everything. So I'm just waiting to hear back on that one. So Oregon should be really soon. And then I'm also looking to add maybe Texas and a few other states. So it just, sometimes it just takes some time what states, right, have the least, what states have the least people requesting telehealth services? Do you happen to know that? I don't, but I think we can actually see that. Um, we can go in and kind of look at where people are coming from. I know like the big hitters are obviously going to be like California, Florida, Texas, New York. Um, but I, I'm thinking maybe Alaska um, and maybe some of the more Southern states, although, you know, I'm licensed in um, Alabama and Louisiana and I, I've been getting plenty of patients from those places, so. That's fantastic that there's an yeah. interest everywhere. Absolutely, I know, it's, it's great. I mean, and we're just growing like crazy. We've got, I think by this summer, we're gonna have 13 or 14 doctors with plant-based telehealth and you figure they've been, you know, they started at the beginning of the pandemic. So March of 2020 with just, um, I think it was just Dr. Marbus and maybe Dr. Miller and Dr. Clapper soon after that. And, uh, you know, now from three doctors to, you know, 13 or 14 is pretty amazing. All right, so now I'm just chopping up some parsley, some fresh parsley. 
I don't know. I know not everybody likes parsley, but I like it. How do you not like parsley? I get not liking cilantro. There's supposedly a gene. Yeah. Parsley. How do you not like parsley? I know. I like it. I think it's delicious. Okay. So then we're going to do a tablespoon of parsley. Oh, and I was going to say that event that you had mentioned earlier that I'm doing tonight. So that's with, it's actually through a local plant pod community group called Salt Lake Thrive, because I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, it's, it's called plant-based eating made easy. And it's really just meant to help people um, with just making eating this way really simple. And I, I think you're similar to me, AJ, where you know, you don't, you eat a lot of the same things all the time and they're usually pretty simple. And so that's where I wanted to make it to where, you know, people can, can know that a plant-based diet can be very sustainable and very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated recipes. Um, and it really can be very, very simple. So that's really what that is going to be about tonight. It's a free event. It's at uh, five o'clock Pacific. And there's an Eventbrite link that you just have to sign up for to be, uh, you can either join the Zoom if you get on early, because I know we've got way more people signed up than we can handle on the Zoom. But if you can't get on the Zoom, you can watch it on Facebook. And if, if you, you do sign up for- me, I can put it in the show notes if you send it to me. I think that the link was in the show notes that I sent you oh, initially, okay, so it should be in there. That. Okay, I'll double no, check. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. And um, if you sign up for it, you can't make it, you will get, a, you will be sent a recording of it too. So if you're not able to make it tonight. Okay. And then we're just going to do a teaspoon of fresh chives. I'll throw that in there. Okay. So you can see how this is starting to look. So just mixing in those delicious fresh herbs. It's looking really good. And what I might end up doing is I'm going to throw this in the fridge. And then um, after we're done making a couple more recipes, then we'll pull them out. And hopefully they'll be a little bit chilly. But it's actually quite thick. It's, it's a nice thick version um, already. I know some of them are a little bit thinner and require uh, you know, chilling them in the fridge just to help thicken them up a little bit. But this one is already good. It didn't taste a little taste. Mmm, that's good. I get my big bag of single uh, oranges. Have you been eating these? AJ? <laughs> They're great. Hey, maybe we can do a blindfolded taste test. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> that would be fun. Okay, so that was the minimalist baker. So now we're gonna do the vegan eight version. Let's see if I can find hers. All right, so she's also um, cashews for her version. Let me just open it up here. All right. Yeah. So it's called healthy vegan ranch dressing oil free no mayo is what hers is. So are you going to say something? Oh, yeah, I was going to say you did send the information and I'm putting it in the chat in the show notes right now. Oh, like perfect presentation tonight. So people can register for that. Oh, lovely. Thank you for doing that. Okay, AJ, I'm just off the camera because I'm just going to rinse out this um, the Vitamix container here. And we can start on the next one. Yeah, it's probably been at least, I mean, I don't even know the last time I had ranch dressing because I don't know that I've even ever had a vegan version of ranch dressing. And so it would have been way before I was went plant-based and vegan. So it's been decades. <laughs> 
So this is exciting. Have you ever had a vegan version of blue cheese? A chef Eric Le Chasseur used to make one. It was phenomenal. No, I haven't. And I think that that sounds fun because I did a study abroad in France uh, while I was in college. And it was at a time that I was vegetarian, but not vegan. So I, I indulged in all of the, you know, the cheeses in, in France. Um, and blue cheese was one that I really did enjoy. Of course, now it doesn't sound good to me at all. Um, but, but I really did enjoy blue cheeses. All right, so um, I'm gonna skip over the the vegan eight one right now. Just be, or sorry, yeah, the vegan eight one. Just because she uses cashews as well, um, I might try to do that one at the end. But I really wanted to try these other two that use something different. So um, I'm gonna do the plentiful kiki one with the white beans, and then we'll do uh, Tammy Kramer's one that uses the silken tofu. Okay. So the great thing is, again, you just add everything in and then you just add those fresh herbs at the end. So I'm just using, for my white beans, I'm just doing some great Northern beans and they've been drained. Oh, and it's half a can, so we'll see. This is my first time making this recipe. So we'll do half a can. Okay, and then she calls, and I've got a bunch of different plant notes here. Uh, because some of them just call for just any plant milk that you want. My favorite is just oat milk. And I buy the one from Trader Joe's because it's just oats and water. Uh, so that one I really like for my plant milk in our house. Um, but this one called for soy milk. And I know, AJ, you can't have soy, but this is another great Trader Joe's. They have their own brands. And I like it because this one, water and whole organic soybeans. So it just really um, has very few ingredients. So that's great. And then I also have an almond milk for one of the other recipes. So for this one, we're going to do the soy milk and it's just half a cup. Yeah, that does make it really creamy. Yeah. All right. And then this is one where we're gonna add in some white vinegar. So it's not very much. So it's one and a half tablespoons of white vinegar. AJ, do you ever have anyone cooking along with you when you're doing these demonstrations? You know, it's hard to know unless they're on Zoom and I can see it. I used to do a series of classes through a company called Chivo where everybody ostensibly was supposed to cook with me. Mm. Yeah, because that would be fun if people were trying to make some of these right now along with me. All right, so one and a half. Do that, that'll help with making that kind of buttermilk, doing the vinegar and the milk. And then this one also says salt or to taste, some salt or to taste. So I'm not gonna add any salt to this one. Um, we can add any something, you know, an alternative near the end if we need to. And then it's a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And then we've got onion powder as well, which we already brought out. So there's our onion powder. And that's just a fourth of a teaspoon. All right, and then this one calls for dried parsley. So we've just got some parsley here that we're gonna add, and that's a teaspoon. I like these big open tops on these so that you can actually get in there. 
when they have the little shaker thing with the hole, I have such a hard time getting it off. I know. I just, I just pull those off and just leave them out because I really don't use those shakers at all. Okay. And then um, pepper to taste and then a pinch of dill when we're all done. So I might just add a little bit of pepper in there. That sounds good. Okay. So I'm gonna let this one go. Okay, this is our bean version, our white bean version of the ranch. And then the only, uh, the only fresh herb that we're gonna do on this one is the dill. This one's nice too, because when you're using the beans, it's a lot easier to get it to blend up nice and smooth. You're not worrying about having those nuts that can take some time. All right, we'll see how that one looks. Okay, so this one's definitely more liquidy. Um, it's pretty thin. So I'm guessing that this one is gonna be one that we'll have to store in the fridge to let it thicken up. Uh, you can see as it's coming out, it's fairly thin. So definitely the, the first version with the cashews is a lot thicker initially. So it's good, all these differences that we're noticing. And then it just has a pinch of dill, so we'll add in some of this dill that I chopped up earlier. Mix that up. Okay, and then I'm gonna throw, this is the plantiful kiki version with the white beans. I'm gonna throw that in the fridge as well. Are you labeling them or putting them so you're gonna remember what's what? <laughs> good, good thought. Um, right now, no, <laughs> but um, you can help me remember that the very first one that I did was the minimalist baker that's in the back. And then the next one is going to be pineapple kiki. And then this last one that I'll make, cause I think we're only going to have time for one more is going to be Tammy Kramer's. So I'm going to rinse out this real quick and then we'll do Tammy Kramer's, which involves the, um, silken tofu. Okay. So with hers, um, she has you do, she starts with uh, the silken tofu. So I'm just using this. This is nice because they're shelf stable for quite a long time. So um, that one you don't have to worry about going and, and buying fresh in the store. Um, I'll use this sometimes. I'm trying to think of the recipes that I've used this. Um, oh, there's a, a recipe that Dr. John McDougall has for, it's called tofu ricotta. And um, it's really, uh, delicious. I actually tried it um, back when I worked as a medical student during one of his 10 day programs, they had it um, as one of the things to try. And <clears throat> he had it that you could use for uh, putting over the top of pizza. So they had a pizza that they did during that program. And, you know, of course, the pizza is just the dough with the red sauce and then veggies on top. But having this tofu ricotta to put over the top on the pizza was just delicious. And it uses silken tofu and then regular firm tofu as well. Okay, so we're gonna add in the 12 ounces of this silken tofu.
And then she has on here a half a cup of plant milk. So she doesn't specify which one. So we're just gonna do oat milk. AJ, what is your um, favorite plant milk? What do you use normally? Well, I, you know, I usually just use almond milk because I'm lazy and I, I just, I don't know. That's just always been my go-to, but I do like yeah. oat milk. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't had almond milk in a while because we, we just kind of switched over to oat and, and we really liked it. So we haven't really tried any others for a while anyway. Okay, so then this, um, so this recipe from Tammy Kramer, the, note, the nutmeg notebook. So she's, um, we've got a 12 ounces of the silken tofu, a half a cup of plant milk, um, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I'll throw that in there. My husband and son are outside and I can see them looking at me through the window. <laughs> are they wondering what you're doing? <laughs> no, they know. They know all the crazy stuff that I do around here. Okay. And then she also calls for a clove of garlic. So I'm going to throw that in there and then we're going to do kind of the same stuff. So um, garlic powder. So it's a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I'm just going to clean this out a little bit. This is fun. I love spending time in the kitchen. It's um, something that sometimes I don't have a lot of time to do, but um, you know, just, I don't know. It almost feels kind of like a meditation to me. It's like, it really puts you in the moment of what you're doing. That You're just focused on what you're doing right then. You're not thinking about anything else. And there's just something about that that I really like. I, I think it's really fun to do that. A lot of people don't like food prep though. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like it. I think it just allows me to kind of just take time for myself and be able to do something like this. Okay. And then this is where, so we did the onion powder, the garlic powder. And then this is where she says a teaspoon of salt substitute. And she says, you know, you can use whatever it is that you want. I happen to have the one that she uses, which is the Stardust. Um, well, your world, well, your world. I've really enjoyed a lot of their products. They've got, it's all SOS free, um, you know, whole food, plant-based, plant-based, obviously. Um, but lots of great dressings and sauces. So this is, and this is, uh, I had my husband try this stardust and he said, it tastes just like salt. So he thought it was a really good option for a substitute. So we'll do a teaspoon of that. And then um, she says a tablespoon of white chia seeds. Now I have this huge thing of chia seeds and they're not the white ones, but she says you can use the black seeds, chia seeds as well. So I'm going to take um, what I already have and use that. So sometimes I'll put chia seeds over oatmeal or, you know, things like that just to get some extra omegas. So this is going to be one tablespoon. Put that in there. I think the white ones uh, just maybe has a better color. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And then she has on there also some black pepper. So we'll just give a little squeeze of black pepper in there. So Lori wants to know, are you going to give your first impressions after tasting them on the air? Yes. So we will taste them today. Definitely. So we're making three recipes today. We will taste them all. And then in a few days when I get the extra ingredient to make um, Nan Simonson's version of it, which is also your version. And I guess based on Drina Burton. Drina Burton. Well. Actually, you can make all three of those. That could be like a whole other episode. Drina versus Nan versus AJ. That would be hilarious, actually. All right, AJ, what, what day do you have open for well, me? We'll too? figure that out. I think that would be amazing because they're very similar. Uh, Susanna said yes. the tofu you use, the silken tofu, was it soft, medium, or firm? And how do you compare Blendtec to Vitamix? Okay, so this is the, it's extra firm. And I honestly, I didn't even look to see if, you know, what it was, but it happens to be extra firm. And I'm not even sure, I haven't really looked into other 
firmnesses of the silken tofu. That's the only one that I really have used. So, um, but it's worked great for my other recipes. So we'll see how it works today. Um, and then what was the other question? Oh, Vitamix, the Vitamix versus Blendtec. Yeah. So, I mean, so far, this is the only time I've used a Vitamix and it's been working great so far. I really like the Blendtec, um, but like I said, mine hasn't been working. It's a new one and, and it just started having an issue. So we have, we're having to have them fix it for us, but I've had a Blendtec. Um, we recently got a new one uh, and I had had it for over 10 years and it worked great. So I think they're pretty similar. They're both just high powered blenders. And I think it really doesn't matter which one you get. Um, the one, the blend tech that I bought has the cover that goes over the top that makes it nice and quiet. And so that is one thing that I really like, which I don't know if Vitamix has that where you can buy the one that, that covers it so that it's a little bit more quiet. Okay. So what we did for Tammy Kramer's recipe from the nutmeg notebook is we added the first 10 ingredients. So we did the silken tofu, the plant milk, apple cider vinegar, the garlic clove, garlic powder, onion powder, the salt substitute. Um, we did the chia seeds, black pepper, and then I added in two dates. And the dates that I got, I, I want to say that I've just bought these from Costco, actually. It's the Deg Deglet Noir. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but these kind of dates. And she has on here to do two of these um, or one of the medjool dates. So I just happen to have those. So I put in two of those. And then again, she's just having us um, mix this up uh, and then add in the fresh herbs at the end. So we will add that and get that going. I like the addition of the chia seeds in this one, makes it a little bit different. And again, this one is going to smooth up really nicely because it's just a silken tofu. There's not a lot that needs to really grind up as much as if you're using a nut-based ranch dressing. Okay, that is looking great. Okay, and that one is actually, I was expecting it to be a little bit more thin, but it's fairly thick. And I know that um, when I talked to Tammy yesterday, she was saying, you definitely want to put this in the fridge for a few hours to thicken up a little bit more and to get cold, you know, taste a little bit better. Um, but I have to say it's already quite thick. So we're gonna throw that into a bowl and then we'll add in those fresh herbs for that one too. It just seems and this like makes a lot. Yeah, compared Sorry. to so many recipes, it seems like there's just so many ingredients in all the ranch dressing recipes. Yeah, and um, you know, I think that the one that probably had the least ingredients seemed like um, Plentiful kikis. Um, but a lot of these use those fresh herbs, which I think probably makes a big difference. Okay, and so now hers um, asks for two tablespoons of fresh dill, which I think we might have enough of. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to throw in some of that. Bring out a little bit more dill because I just love dill. And it's just, uh, it hers doesn't say it, it just says fresh dill. Um, but I just minced it up. So it's nice and nice and minced in little pieces. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got two tablespoons and then she's got um, one tablespoon of fresh Italian parsley. Um, I don't know if mine is Italian or not. It just says parsley on it. Um, but I think it's pretty similar. Okay, so we're doing a tablespoon of the parsley and then one tablespoon of fresh chives. So we'll grab what we have here already and then we'll just chop up a few more. I really like the idea of having these chives in it. Right, so I'm just gonna chop up a few more of those. Yeah, I think that probably the reason I love the idea of ranch dressing so much is because of you know, the, the herbs that are in it. Because the dill, the chives, the parsley are all things that I really love. I just right, love, so I love the creaminess of it. Mm, yes. All right, so I'm gonna rinse this off so we don't mix the last batch. You should bring your son and husband in and just tell them one, two, three and see what they think. That's a great idea. I like that. Yeah, yeah I've got some- Piece of, some, piece of, got piece some, of celery or something they can dip yep. into it. Yeah, in fact, I've got some celery and some little carrots that we're gonna try. Okay, so we've got that mixed in there now. All right, um, so we've got three recipes. So we're gonna have um, got Tammy Kramer's from the Nutmeg Notebook here. And then I'll grab the other ones out of here. Okay, Plentiful Kiki. So I'm gonna just show you kind of what these different ones look like. So here's, so this is Tammy. So it's pretty thick. Like I said, it's already pretty thick. Um, so that's what hers is looking like. And then um, Plantiful Kiki's version is that one. That one's a little bit on the thinner side. So I think it probably could use um, being in the fridge a little bit longer. Okay, and then this is the Minimalist Baker. And that one also came out um, quite thick. So that one looks really good. So we're gonna put hers right there. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get my husband and son to jump in here real quick and see if they'll taste test with me. Hey, Augie, come here. Come on, Augie. I want you to try something. Yeah, August or That's Augie. That's the best before. name. I love it because it was a cartoon growing up, yeah. Augie Doggie. All right, now he's not gonna be able to hear you because I've got my AirPods in, but can you wave and say hi to Chef AJ? Do you oh remember her? Oh my God, his hair is like, to, his hair is gorgeous. She's saying that your hair is beautiful. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> so, like amazing. So Augie, I was wondering if you would be willing to try a couple of these ranch drips and ranch dips and tell me which one you like the best. Okay, so look, I have carrots and celery. So we've got some things to dip. So I'll let you choose, Augie, which one you want to try. But mom has to carrots? try too. I'll be trying. Are you just eating it by itself or did you dip it? Oh, <laughs> he's so cute. Okay, so we're going to try this one first. What do you think? That's good. So this one is the Milmos Baker. I'm going to take another dip because it's really good. Okay. okay, that one is really, really good. Okay, what'd you think of this one? Did you try that one? Here, there's another carrot for you. This is the so Augie is Augie is nine. Um, he's we call him a veglet because he's been vegan since birth. Um, but he loves baseball, so he's got his A's his A's shirt on because he loves playing baseball, watching baseball, all things That's baseball. So cute. And I've, now, never heard, I've never heard that word veglet yeah. before. That's adorable. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. What do you think of that one? Oh, he doesn't like that one as much. Let's, okay. So he really likes the Minimalist Baker. I actually really like that one, Tammy Kramer's version. Um, but she did mention that it's better when you stick it in the fridge. 
So we'll have to try these again after they've been in the fridge for a while. But I think that one's really good too. And then Aki, did you try this one yet? Oh. Here, try again. Let me know what you think. It's okay. Okay, this one is your favorite? Okay. So Augie thinks that the Minimalist Baker one is his favorite. I would say that right now in their current state, I would agree that that one is probably the best. Um, and then I would say probably Tammy's is second and then Planetful Kiki's is third. But I think it will make a difference when we chill these in the fridge and can have them cold and thickened up a little bit more to see how those are. But you see, he can't stop himself. You want some celery? Okay. Do you want another carrot? There you go. All right. So there's a question on what would you use these restaurant dressings on other than salad? Like you are well, as dips. They'd be great yeah. on, on cauliflower wings. Yeah. And actually that is something that I would like to make one of these days, something I haven't made before, but I think cauliflower wings. And then, you know, I just cut up some, you know, some carrots and some celery. So this is good for dips and this could be something that we could put in his lunches too, to take to school with some ranch dip and just helping him, you know, use more or, or have more veggies. And then, um, I mean, it's really an excuse to eat more greens, leafy greens, eating a salad every day is a great idea for anybody. And if this helps you eat more greens, then great. So that's what I'm planning on having today is a big, huge leafy green salad with some ranch dressing. Wow, this was a lot of fun, really. I mean, I, and what a great idea to do that, you know? Yeah, I know. It's been a lot of fun. And then I'll have a chance to make that other version as well. Um, that's, like you mentioned, Drina Burton, Nan Simonson, yourself have kind of perfected, which uses a potato, Yukon Gold potato, and um, like a vegan uh, yogurt as well. Yeah, and, and then it this gives it it gives it like a sour taste, which not, not a sour in a bad way, but I love, I just try, try the, I'd love for you to do it again. And I don't care if I come in last because I know I took the salt out and that makes a difference, but you can do Drina's version, Nan's version and mine. And, uh, and I think it'd be really fun. Yeah, I think so too. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try this other version and we'll see how it compares uh, because the great thing is that all of these are a little bit different. Yeah. Know? And so if you don't mind, there's three oh, people sent in medical questions. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And if you can't answer them, tell them to please consider booking a consult. So Betty says, would you kindly ask Dr. Davis if she has any recommendation for someone with left-sided hemifacial spasms? I've been whole food plant-based just over two years. So, um, you know, that's such a specific question. Um, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, for that specifically, I'd need to know a little bit more of the history. So I would say that that might be a perfect reason to go in and, and check out one of the plant-based doctors at Plant-Based Telehealth. Uh, if I'm not licensed in your state, someone is. So I would just go on to the website. It's nice on the Plant-Based Telehealth website. Once you go in there, it'll ask for your state. It'll ask if you have Medicare or not. And then based on that, it will tell you which doctors you can see. So that's perfect. what I would recommend. Yeah. Thank you. This is from Marlene. I'm 68 years old and have had type one diabetes for 51 years, have followed a whole food plant-based diet for six years, still having a hard time keeping BG, maybe that's blood glucose at an even level, pretty sensitive to insulin. My A1C has been around 6.1 a couple of years. Is there a plant-based physician who is an endocrinologist I could, I could consult with? Good, good question. So we don't specifically have an endocrinologist on staff at Plant-Based Telehealth. Now that might change down the road. We are looking at the possibility of bringing on some specialists, but right now most of us are what you would consider like more of a primary care type doctor, like an internal medicine doctor, family medicine doctor. Um, however, we do have uh, quite a few of our doctors who are very knowledgeable in diabetes. And so you could come see one of us for that specifically. But the other thing is there are some places that you can go to look for um, other specialists who are supportive of plant-based or plant-based themselves. So um, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine has a website, pcrm.org. If you go to pcrm.org slash find a doctor, 
you can look under specific specialties. And so you can look for endocrinologists to see if there's anyone who is either local in your area or does telehealth for your state. Uh, the other place that is a good one to find plant-based doctors is uh, plantbaseddocs.com. And you can do the same thing. You can search by specialty and try to see if you can find somebody in who covers your state. So that's what I would recommend. Great. I know I had at least two endocrinologists on the show, but I'm, their names are escaping me right now. So I want to say Patel, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Okay. This okay. one's kind of a general question. So you might be able to give some advice to Keisha. Can you ask Dr. Nikki Davis, what should a person cut out to lower blood pressure over 270 and triglycerides over 300? The person doesn't eat meat or dairy, but eats white bread, nuts, avocado, white sugar, and vegan food with condiments. So did you say blood pressure or blood sugar at the beginning? Well, it's, they said the blood pressure is over 270 and the triglycerides are over 300. Okay. Um, so, cause normally blood pressure is two numbers. So I'm just wondering if, if that is, was maybe meant to be something different because it's, uh, I don't know if that's like their systolic because that's extremely high. So I would definitely go and see one immediately if that's what your systolic blood pressure is. Um, if they're talking about blood sugars, um, that would also be high, but that would be typical for someone who has like diabetes. Um, but you do want, so anyone with any blood pressure, blood sugar, uh, problems looking at eating more whole food plant-based. So really focusing on whole plant foods, trying to make sure that you're getting in, um, you know, a good variety of plant foods and that you're not just sticking to like, you know, white breads and things like that. That if you're going to include some breads, whole wheat would be better because then you're getting in some nutrition there instead of just getting, um, you know, basically the carbohydrate with not as much nutrition. So, um, as a very general, um, general thing, I would just say, make sure that you're getting enough whole plant foods. Great. Well, thank you so much. This was really fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you, AJ. And I'll, I'll um, be in contact and I'll let you know when I'm ready to make that, that last recipe and then we'll have to compare them all. I can't wait. And uh, that'll be really fun. I can't wait to hear what your husband thinks too. Wouldn't it be funny if you guys split and each one of you liked one of the three the best? Yeah, that would be funny. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't says- put past us. Monica wants to know if you have any plant-based doctors in Canada. And my understanding is it's even easier in other countries. You can see people in other countries, right? Right. So we do um, what's what we consider a consult, because if you're in a different country, we can't necessarily send lab, lab orders. We can't send prescriptions. Um, so that makes it a little bit more difficult to where you'd have to definitely have a local provider there who, if I, for instance, recommended, let's check your B12 level then you would just need to go to someone else who could then make that order for you. I have had some consults with people in Canada and we go through, you know, maybe you've had lab work that you just want to talk to someone about and we can go through those kinds of things. We can make some plans for your health and um, figure out how to get you, you know, some of that additional help that you might need if you might need a prescription or some extra lab work. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Well, I can't wait for the next challenge and to see you again and thank, and to see you tonight in your workshop, which I've been posting in the chat and also it's in the show notes. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really excited for that one. It's a really nice, just basic version of how to make eating plant-based very easy because that's how we do it at our house. We eat very simple. Uh, we don't make things too complicated and that's how it is sustainable for us. That's great. And that's how it's been sustainable for me for 45 years. So take care, Dr. Davis. Thanks for stopping in, Augie. And thanks to all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 5 p.m. Pacific time when I will be doing my final in the free seven-day series, Dinner with Chef AJ. And we'll be making spicy broccoli peanut noodles and peanut butter fudge truffles from my new book, Unprocessed. Take care, Dr. Davis. Bye-bye.